I got about, oh, almost a half a bag left over. So that's good. So here are some Agrosai Badgerita, or also known as the uh, Piapino mushroom. You see it's growing up. It uh, colonizes the uh, outside of it faster than through the center. But I'll let it go until it's completely white. This is my second attempt uh, with these because first ones I made was too high of uh, nitrogen in it, I believe. Hopefully it's not crummy strains. I paid a lot of money for them. But, uh, you know, sometimes that happens. But I've already bought some backups, so I'll definitely be getting into uh, those lion's mane and piapino mushroom strains eventually. So once I have these on the shelves, I like to open the lid up at least once a day, not only to see the progress of how it's growing, but to give it a small amount of vent ventilation. Now you don't necessarily have to, as long as you leave these lids loose, as you can see. It'll be loose enough that it can breathe. And uh, you notice too that I never put bags on the very bottom shelf in here just because the floor is a bit cold. But since these blocks are in these bins and the lids on it, it tends to build up a little extra heat so they don't get cold. So I just go ahead and put them on the bottom shelf and save space. So now I'm going to take this extra mix down to the basement and we're going to chop some mushrooms off, some fresh blocks, and uh, we'll show you how to tear the old casing mix off and apply the new casing mix on top so that the mushrooms just keep on coming. You see here, I have one of the racks of wire rack shelving upside down so it scoops inward so the mushrooms don't roll off, and a sheet of butcher paper. They can use over and over again until it just gets too covered with spores and bits of dried mushroom. Um, just make sure you cut it to the length of the wire rack so you use the full mouse space. So you can see here I have several of these blocks of this batch all here on the same shelf that are done. You see some of these blocks lag behind and also you can tell that some of them don't have as much uh, action going on top. Now I've been trying to figure out why that is that uh, some of these blocks like for instance you can see this one here that just has a crazy amount of pins forming on it and very thick colonization versus some of these other blocks that just have some mushrooms growing out in certain spots and I thought maybe well it could be differences in the amount of grain or maybe the mix didn't get thoroughly distribu distributed with the uh, cottonseed meal and whatnot but I believe probably it's just uh, how deeply colonized the top of the casing mix is because uh, some of these more recent ones that I put down here you can see over here I let them go for uh, about two days after the top appeared to be colonized and you can see that they are just uh, much more thickly uh, covered with the mycelium and a few of them were already making pins you see here too that when you put these uh, blocks together, they'll actually begin to grow together and form mushrooms in between them, which is okay. Just let them form, and then when they get mature, pick them. If for some reason you got to take the block out of there before the size done, it'll uh, split off. Just be careful and pry it apart. All right, so let's take one of these blocks, one of these very very full of mushrooms. You can see here, there's a mushroom growing off the side here. I'm just gonna break it off from this other one. You got to just take scissors and you actually see this is actually growing into it. You can see it's just hanging there. That's quite a bit of mushrooms. You could let it go maybe another oh half a day to a day and uh, the mushrooms would get a little bit larger, but you start noticing a lot more spores getting dropped and uh, the caps getting thinner. So this is really the, the prime time to pick them, but you can pick them uh, even a day later than this. So what I do is I have my scissors and I very carefully without 
cutting myself. Cut a few mushrooms at a time. Of course, as you get more deft, you can get it like three or so cut at once. Now, if you have any of them that have some of the casing mixed all on it, you can either wipe it off with a clean towel, or if it's just at the very end of the mushroom, go ahead and just give it a, a slice off the end like that. And then clean it, wipe it off your uh, scissors if it's still on there. So it seems like a lot of mushrooms on it, but it's actually pretty easy cutting it like this versus, I think, pulling off the bare sawdust blocks. You see here, the, the larger the stem, usually the more of it I leave, just because it gets a little bit tougher towards the base. You always want to hope for many smaller, evenly sized mushrooms. And any part where you see it's fuzzy, or the mycelium looks like it's getting very dense and hard, go ahead and just cut it away. So that looks like about oh, a pound and a half or so. A little bit lighter than I want, but again, it'll have a second flush, and probably with another half a pound to get there to a full two pounds. But some of these blocks are probably at at least two pounds. This one I noticed especially is full. Yeah, see, look at that. That's a lot of mushrooms. Every bit of space got a mushroom almost. So I can just eyeball it right there and tell you that that is at least two pounds. I thought about possibly using maybe like a uh, turkey carving knife or something like that. We're on these first flushes since the majority of the casing mix is uh, tied up with the mycelium. You could possibly just put it on a shelf like so and cut it with the turkey knife, like cut the whole thing at once. I don't know, something I can think about. You have to get the mix on top pretty level so the stumps are all the same height because you can see here they're quite a bit staggered. So it may not be an option, but if you ever think about making robots do this, you're going to have to make it all consistent. That is my goal, by the way, is to eventually, not too far into the future, but maybe see about getting some robots doing some of this work, or at least some more intelligent machinery. That's the future, you know, all this menial labor, slicing mushrooms or harvesting vegetables out of a hot summer field that nobody really wants to do. Well, that's all eventually will be done by machines for the good of mankind. It won't be evil cyborgs. So it's going to take me a while to cut through all of this. And once I'm finished harvesting these mushrooms, let me go ahead and show you how to reapply some of this casing mix. So I've chop down the first flush off of 11 of these blocks tonight and I'll do quite a bit more tomorrow morning. You can see here I have a whole bunch of second flushers coming out that some of them I'll probably cut down tomorrow at some point too. Not too bad, all about another half a pound on average. Here's those third flushers. So I'm going to take some more rubbing alcohol, sanitize my hands up, And I'm just going to grab a hold of the outside edge of this stuff and tear it. And you want to try not to chunk the top of the block too much, but you can see that mostly it's just the casing mix that comes off. And the mycelium is all 
kind of divide it away from the sawdust. You know, I chunked it a little bit there, but again, it's not a big, big deal if you chunk it a little bit. And then go ahead, any, any mix that you see that doesn't have any little mushrooms growing in it, it's fine to leave, but you can see you're like right here, there's a whole bunch of little ones. Any of that can cause trouble, plus it has little bits of the uh, stems and whatnot they have cut, or little bits of the cuttings from harvesting in there too. So you can, you can pretty much pick it almost clean, so it's not a big deal. So I just go ahead and sit it right there back on the shelf. Now if it's a third flush, I'll go ahead and sit it around so the label is facing the inside just so I know it's on its way out. But uh, you can figure out any kind of scheme you want. I mean, usually you can tell me if there's that many mushrooms coming out and it looks like that, you can tell it's on a, a second flush. So it's not too hard of a, something to figure out. Again, just tear right off the top. And you can be quick about it. It doesn't have to be neat. Make a mess on the floor, it doesn't matter. Just clean it up all later. So you can see there's a bit more steps involved doing these case bags of sawdust substrate than there is, say, a pasteurized straw log or cottonseed haul log. But the reward is that you get a much better product that lasts longer in storage, it has a better texture when you bite into it because the mycelium is denser. And so that'll beat out any competition you might ever have. I think just the ability to store it longer is a good enough advantage to want to do it. And also too, I'm picking a, probably about the same amount of maximum amount of mushrooms I would per uh, shelf space, but I can never really get a good third flush out of the cottonseed logs or straw logs really for that matter, just because by then the pasteurized material is usually molding up bad, so it's letting more mold spores in your room every time that happens. So makes it even more difficult to get a clean second flush so when you're casing these you'll still get mold eventually from dead mushroom material against the plastic down around you know about here in the perimeter but it won't cause a problem just because the casing mix is going to cut off the top of the block and not only air down there to circulate the more mold spores out so I'm going to go ahead and finish these up and then we'll get to adding some casing mix on top of them.